and welcome to another um, attempt of making something on YouTube. So since I've been trying to pay more attention to YouTube, I've been also um, following more YouTubers now. And because I started the channel really late, I obviously missed all of the YouTube trends and I missed everything and I mean, not that I didn't know they existed, but I missed the right time to make them, if that makes sense. Like sometimes there are um, trends on YouTube and I have never followed any of them because I'm new to the whole thing of making videos. So there's this thing where YouTubers just get ready while doing makeup and instead of uh, making a whole tutorial out of it, they just talk while they're doing makeup. And that sounds like something I need to do because I always ramble whenever I'm trying to make tutorials or stuff like that. And another thing is that most times I do uh, live streams on Instagram while getting ready. So it's kind of the same thing except on Instagram even if I share the live stream later, they only last 24 hours and I always get messages from people saying Oh, I'm so sad I miss your uh, live stream. So I thought that this might be an easier way to leave the get ready with me like forever and then people who were not on time to watch it can just watch it whenever they can. Also, I'm trying something different. I bought this wig on eBay for like two pounds. <laughs> And it's very cosplay-ish, but I do love the short hair, like, punk vibe, I guess. I have a short black hair wig and a red one too, and I love using the black one for pictures so much that I decided I could get, like, a white and a gray one, and right now I have the gray one on. Although they are not professional wigs, they don't have the lace or anything like that. It does look a little... But if we style it right, then I guess it might work. My whole intention for this is to wear the hairs like in front of the eyes, but of course I'm gonna have to pull them aside to do the makeup, so I'm sure it's gonna look very weird. So to make this whole video ha happen while getting ready, I did uh, post a little uh, question box on Instagram stories asking you guys about topics you'd like to hear me talk about while getting ready so i'm sure that by now there are some there and let's just get this fucking thing started so this is the weird part where i have to style this bit of hair like i was expecting it to be like this like both sides would look like this but then what is this like but I still enjoy it, like, if I only use this side. Okay, who cares? I'm gonna have to make this in a very uh, ugly way. Oh my god, what is this? Oh my ass! What the fuck? Okay... Just bear with me while I'm getting... I look like a grandma. Oh my god, this is like grandma hair. If I put it like this... Oh. Also, yeah, it doesn't have lace, so... Yes! No! <laughs> okay, it looks nasty, but I just need to get it out of the way. And again, I'm gonna go for a very pale look. I've already primed everything, so I'm just gonna put stuff on. Can already tell I am gonna have a hard time talking while doing this because if I'm trying to be quick, I'm usually 
just silent and now I'm gonna have to talk. Now I'm gonna have to divide my attention. And you'll hear your work in the background. So I have your topics open. Um, and there are a lot of people surprisingly asking about the new album, which is really cool. It's going nicely. It's, I mean, everything is still very new to me. I mean, Occultist is my very first band, you know, so like I'm new to all of it, to everything, to the entire process. I'm like a complete ignorant, I feel. There are a lot of like terminologies and stuff like that that I'm still not aware, although I'm learning and I learn very uh, quickly. It's turning out to be an amazing experience so far as I'm learning so much in such short time it's amazing also it's a very surreal feeling to be working with such a known production team oh i even spit myself i'm sorry i mean what are the odds that your first plan is gonna end up working with people like moonspell i cannot describe the feeling because they are amazing people they are very humble down to earth they are very like caring and it's amazing and i cannot like express myself in the right way these are people that i used to see on mtv when i was a kid like shit they're like it's a big fucking band and i never expect for my first band to work with people like them it's a crazy feeling to be in the same room with them and to be it's not just like even any room it's just we were working in their own studio and it's I'm gonna cry and this is such like still a crazy feeling I really cannot describe to be in the same room with them and they're listening to our songs and they're saying, well, this is great, uh, we can work on this and we can work on that and it's just fucking crazy, like why would people like them even notice us, you know? They have like their own brutal shit going on and yet they're taking their own time to help us out on our new album. They're literally helping us with every single little thing it's amazing they're giving us not only like professional you know like as a musician but they're also giving us advices as a person if this makes sense they are amazing people they truly are and i'm so stoked and speechless i still can't process that this is happening and how amazing they are um I'm very thankful and grateful and I tell them this all the time and so does the rest of the band. We're all just crazy thankful for this fucking amazing opportunity to be creating stuff close to them and learning from them. It's just... And what's been happening... Um, see, it looks so much better. Also, this is every kid in 7th grade. Yes. <laughs> oh my god, okay. Um, but regarding the songs themselves and the album, uh, it's coming out good. Of course, uh, I mean, if it was only up to me to make an album, I would have made it completely different. But we have, of course, multiple people involved in it, you know, like, the rest of the band and now the production team as well which is crazy hearing their own opinions it's really weird to sit down with them and to try to work on a song of ours and then they have their own opinion and and I don't even know how to describe this to you it's like when you meet someone that big 
you don't talk about yourself, you know, you're like, oh, I really like shit, like, I don't know, I don't know how to explain this. And then they're sitting down with us and they're helping us with our own creations. It's amazing to see them transmit their knowledge on the subject for our stuff. It's like, why is this happening? Why are they listening to our songs and why are they helping us with our songs? It's an amazing feeling but very surreal to me because they are amazing and shit, I don't, oh I'm doing it too, okay. Uh, I don't even know how to describe this, it's like working with people like them is fucking crazy, dreamy, dream come true, you know, and I don't even know. It's amazing and I don't have the words. They are helping us create amazing uh, new songs that... Oh man, they, look, they sound so different from what we... Oh, this is looking terrible, I'm so sorry. They sound so extremely different from what we've originally composed and but it's still us and it's a bit of them and it's a lot of hard work from everybody and it's turning <sighs> I can't even fucking talk I feel so fucking retarded I feel like I'm not even expressing like a third of what I want to say it's just it's such an overwhelming feeling that I cannot even find the words but overall I guess I can say it's oh my god like this hair parted like this it looks awful I'm so sorry but I guess I can say that it's going amazing we have finished producing all the songs for an album it's not an EP it's an album it's not like four songs okay so it's, it was a lot of hard work in such short time, um, but it's turning out amazing. Also, right now I'm using one of the new shades from Necromancy Cosmetica called Solace Martin, and it's the most mugging, beautiful, rusty yellow color. And I'm using it as an eyeshadow because I'm gonna do a rusty. Oh my god, look at the pigment! I'm also like fucking grateful that you guys are so involved in uh, Occultist and the whole project and our songs and that so many of you have bought our EP and t-shirts and patches and whatever and it's a really like a huge surreal feeling as well because like we are really small we have over two years do we even have two years? I think we're gonna be two years this year and everything is happening so fast. I never thought that, you know, for me, my first band, of course, for, for the guys, it's not their first band. Um, I would have never expect, expected it, I can't talk, to go as far as it's going. Like, what do you mean we have less than two years and there and we have a fan club in china what do you mean and also i'm so sad that our fucking portuguese carrier lost your package i'm gonna fucking <sighs> i went to the post office and i i yelled so much like are you crazy i'm paying for your services and you don't do it and i'm so sorry they lost your package i want to make it up to all of you as soon as i can so uh, like the whole feeling around the band is all just good feelings and crazy speechless shit going on and I don't even know where to start describing it. We've been having tons of support and I can't even like describe the whole feeling around it. It's just like crazy. I don't even know how am I sounding like while talking, but I hope it sounds like I hope I'm being able to transmit how thankful and grateful and happy I am for this great experience. The fact that all of you even get like interested and like the music and have it on your phones and we get tagged in like your pictures wearing the t-shirts and listening to the song is just 
crazy and the amount of requests we have from you guys saying stuff like come to my country we have like a fan base and we want to hear you play and I'm like what do you mean you have a fan base and you want to hear us play we have like not even we're not even two years in this roller coaster and it, it has exploded it's amazing and the magazines and the reach and oh my god and the support we've been also having from big names that I'm not even like sure I can mention but Jesus fucking Christ lipsticks are honestly so good for everything for eyeshadow obviously for the lips for blush contour fuck it, they're so good I love them and I love necromancy cosmetica so much they're amazing people they are very hard-working people that and they've been through a lot of shit and they still like they're still out there kicking it I really do admire them so much they're so inspiring to me I'm usually like so quick doing these when I'm not talking and I feel like I'm diverging a little is that a word? I feel like I'm distracting myself also I'm talking and I'm getting like makeup wrinkles like this I'm smiling and then I get the wrinkles okay so now I'm gonna use a palette that I haven't talked about or worn yet which is from Living Dead uh, they have this really bright oh, also worst design for packaging I'm so sorry this who does it like that shit Um, honestly, I have like a backlog of stuff that I need to shoot. I haven't had time yet. I had like stuff happening personally that it's been very um, time consuming and huge backlog of stuff. Oh, finally I opened it. And I was saying they have like very bright oranges, also blues and purples, not for me. But they do have blacks and shit and that's always like handy. Sorry, I'm just like honest. I don't want to come off as a bitch as I always do but whatever so let me take a look at your topics some of the things you're sending me are not topics but I appreciate the effort so I'm gonna go for the chronological order and the first one I got is actually someone asking your favorite horror stories or something paranormal that has happened to you you're gonna kill me for this one because I have no I don't have any sounds like wrong right i don't know i'm just i've always been low-key jealous of all the people that have like encountered ghosts and stuff like that because oh this is so annoying like us who have this passion around that and the supernatural and the occult and whatever um two different things but the whole like thing every time someone comes up like with a ghost story or something supernatural happening I'm like, what did it happen to Because I don't know if it's like people who are scared of it tend to fear it more therefore I think their mind creates scenarios, supernatural scenarios that don't actually exist It's like, you know, if you're scared of rats which I'm not, I love them, they're so cute and you hear something moving you're gonna be like, oh my god, it's a rat, right? makes sense and I feel like people who fear the supernatural tend to experience those things more because they think it's a supernatural episode and then it's not and for us curious people who are kind of like waiting for it to happen it never happens uh, I don't even know how to explain this to you it's like whenever I'm like alone I guess for example and I hear a weird sound I just I just get all like, is it gonna be it? Is it gonna be it? Is it gonna is it gonna finally happen? And then nothing happens. <laughs> I've had like weird encounters with actual people, which is like way scarier than supernatural things. Like, get concerned about the living, not the dead. It's just it's just that I'm just like sad. I never experienced 
any supernatural shit or ghost. I don't have any ghost stories. I wanted to be that person that like, oh man, I've seen like so many ghosts, like it's amazing. And I used to watch those Discovery Channel uh, shows where they go like ghost hunting and when they like take the radios with them or whatever and they just try to get some sort of activity from ghosts, I guess. I do know of ghost stories from other people though, like people who have allegedly experienced ghost stories, which was probably just like nothing. I guess kind of a ghost story that I think it's okay to share is one of the houses my boyfriend used to live in, you know, like it was an old house and not too old though, but old and it had like wooden stairs, wooden like cabinets and sometimes we would hear stuff like squeaking and my natural reaction is immediately like, okay, it's old and it's wood, it's gonna squeak from temperature or whatever, so I never got like scared, it was natural, you know, it was like normal and then sometimes we would hear them and he would stop like, did you hear that? and I'll be like, hear what? Did, did you seriously not hear that? and I'll be like, no, what are you talking about? and then I low-key wanted to for it to happen and then nothing would ever happen, we would hear something then he would notice and then it would stop it was always like that so later he told me uh, because he didn't want to scare me although I would have preferred for him to tell me at the time because I was waiting for that moment he told me that he guesses that people would have like died there or nearby and that he would hear them call his name but like as in really loud and closely and not just like imagination i guess because he's a bit skeptical about it but then at the same time it would be kind of too loud to be yourself imagining things and i was with him like next to him and he'd say did you hear that and i'd be like no because i didn't but then he'd insist that he heard something so I think it's okay for me to tell you this story because he has told it to a few people. I hope it's okay. I hope I'm not upsetting him because, like, he has always been very respectful when it comes to this um, matter. I don't want to upset anybody, you know. But he also told me that those squeaky things we would hear would be them going up and down the stairs so my my natural reaction to be like it's old temperature it's gonna squeak was actually like not right according to what he told me he said that he would often hear them going up and down the stairs like actual steps also now i'm using an eyeshadow from lunatic cosmetic labs that i haven't used yet and oh my god <laughs> i'm living for this it's so gorgeous so i would have much rather for him to tell me at the time what was going on instead of just did you hear that no what is it nothing <laughs> that's the closest thing i got to experience i get it is something right uh, but i'm still like not, like i don't seek it but whenever something weird happens i'm like Ooh, is this gonna be it, girl? Is this the moment? And then nothing happens. I guess they don't. They just don't come for us who want to find them. Does that make sense? It's like it's stupid to think that they want to frighten people because that's also doesn't make any sense. If you think about it this way, this is like a theory I have. They want to make us step back of what is theirs. So if you're scared of it, then they might spike you up and be like, get the fuck out of here. And if we're not, which is our cases, they're like, we're not gonna move so you can believe that we don't exist. So, does this make sense? I think it makes sense, although it's just like a fucking... 
I respect the whole thing either way, so it's not like I'm just gonna provoke anything. If y'all wanna know the shade I'm using from Lunatic Cosmetic Labs, it's called Love Lace. Like, the words are so tiny. So, let me just find another question of yours. Someone was asking what will my child look like? My child, why do I keep saying like that? Someone was asking what was my childhood like? Okay, he's gonna keep barking, so I'm gonna have to talk over it. Regarding my childhood, it was it was a good childhood, I mean. Uh, I'm not sure what aspect do you want me to talk about, but I'm not gonna go like about the private stuff, so yeah. I was the weird kid at school. It's funny because some of the people who used to bully me at school suddenly come up and like, Hey, remember me? And I'm like, no bitch, I don't have any spare change. Fuck off. Um, of course, I was very uh, picked on because I was weird, because of like my hairstyle at the time and because I wore glasses and braces and all of that. Um, at the time, of course, I really let that get to me. And I grew up with that until I got to high school, which is our 10th grade, 11th grade. And it's something that has definitely shaped me to like look above certain things, if that makes sense. At the time, I suffered a lot and I got into depression really early, which I'm totally not ashamed to talk about. It's not something to be ashamed of. In a stage where you have to be sure of what you're gonna become, I mean, in life as an adult, I'm not sure if this is making any sense. At a time where we have to pick an area to follow. Of course, I wanted like arts. I would tell everybody that I wanted to be an artist somehow, some way. I had this feeling that I never really cared what kind of artist I would be. All that I ever wanted to do was art and create some form of art. It doesn't matter what it was. I just wanted to do stuff that I like. And something that also brought me down was that, for example, before I got to high school, my teachers were very not into arts. So I remember this one time where we had a teacher ask us, so what do y'all wanna be when you grow up? When you grow up. And when it came to me, I was like, oh, I wanna be an artist. Like, I was so sure, I was so like assertive. I was like, I'm gonna be an artist, I don't care. And then she was like, I mean, one thing is when you have your parents tell you that you can be anything because of course they're going to tell you that because they're your parents. But the people above that, that not above, but you know what I mean, other people that you hear that kind of expect to hear that kind of things from are your teachers because like they're the adults also in charge of guiding you to your adulthood. And when I said that I wanted to be an artist, I remember my teacher started laughing at me like crazy. And I was like in eighth grade, seventh grade, I don't even remember. She started laughing out loud. And I don't mean like giggling. She started like, ah, in my face. Sorry about that impression, it was awful. Uh, she started laughing in my face. And she said, honey, you have to pick real job because if you want to be an artist you're gonna end up on the street because being an artist is not a real job you're gonna have to pick something realistic for yourself and i remember at the time of course then everybody proceeded to laugh at me like it was usual to happen with every single little thing i did or said and i remember that crushed me so hard that I decided that I no longer wanted to be an artist and I was going to be an architect because it was closer to being an artist. Why would a teacher say that to his own student? I don't know. It was a woman, by the way. What a bitch. Like, I'm sorry if she's watching this. You were not entitled to tell me that at that time because, honey, don't go say stuff like that to a teenager trying to find its own way, okay? Okay, 
So meanwhile, my... Whoop. Fuck. <laughs> meanwhile, my Medusa ball fell out while I was checking the footage. Also, my apologies because this hair does not look good, but it will look good at the end, I promise. So, I have an interesting question here. How's it like to be an alternative model? What are the struggles you face, etc. P.S. Love ya. I love you too. I mean, I started to be a model by accident. I never wanted to be a model. I remember it all started with the first time I ever collaborated with Rogan Wolf. I was supposed to shoot another model and then a jewelry came in. Uh, and I was like, hey, the model is not... I remember she was taking a long time to answer or stuff like that. So I said, hey, meanwhile, I can take pictures of myself wearing it if you'd like. And they were like, yeah, that's totally fine. And then I took the pictures and they said, okay, we love this and we want to shoot our next collection with you. And I was like, oh, what is this? What is going on? I was like crazy happy. And ever since they picked me up, because it all happened because of them, then other brands started like seeing the profile. And that's how I started modeling, even though I've never modeled for anyone else but myself. I guess I modeled for friends when they needed it for school products, but that's different. Struggles that I have. Being an alternative model or also, I mean, working as a freelancer or working for myself, um, the first struggle that I find is loads of people don't want to pay us. This has always happened to me and to other people and not just as a model, most times as a photographer. We have this huge problem. For some reason, brands think that it's okay to come up to you and say, hey, we want to work with you, but we don't want to pay. The amount of inquiries I've gotten from people saying, hey, we would love to work with you. And then I'd say, okay, that's great. Here are my rates. And then they either get silent, don't answer back, or they say, oh, uh, you know, uh, we don't have a budget or we had no idea that you would charge us for this. What are you talking about? Explain to me why would we work for other people for free? Why? No, not gonna happen. That's one of the biggest struggles I feel we have. Another struggle we have is that we have to make our own schedule. So this means we don't always go to bed at the same time. We don't eat or have meals at the same time hours we don't have scheduled free days and this is more of a physical slash health struggle because if you don't have a schedule on your own fucking system then your system is gonna go berserk recently i had a really strange um health episode where I had something that felt like a seizure because I was overworking myself so much that my body shut down and it was really dangerous in the sense that this happened to me while I was driving back at 2 a.m. from one of our rehearsals. It was really scary to go through that, it was really scary to feel my entire body shake and not being able to control it. It was scary to have spasms on every single part of my body, including my arms, while I was holding on a fucking steering wheel. Like, how do you drive and have spasms at the same time? Luckily at 2 a.m. there's nobody or very little people in the highway. And uh, that was my luck but i got home and i started crying to my mom saying i don't know what is going on with my body because <laughs> i legit only felt like i was gonna die and that's the biggest struggle for me more than people asking for free jobs is to not being able to as much as you want to it's very difficult to have your own schedule because it's always different 
it's really important to know when to stop and I've only learned that this year because since I wasn't stopping my body stopped for me that's my top struggle is to stop and tell myself you need to rest because I'm not that kind of person uh, I'm very like workaholic if like I keep telling you if I need to work 24 hours a day just to get something done then I will and I will do it right now I won't stop until I'm finished so next topic what does your boyfriend think about weird messages you get if you get any uh, we laugh at them we laugh at them so <laughs> We laugh at them so much because it's just fucking hilarious. I don't even like keep them. Some people I don't even block because like keep the jokes coming. I like them. But yeah, I do get a lot of weird messages. I think all of us who do what we do get weird messages. Uh, to me, I somehow have loads of messages from people who feel the need of sending me biblical shit like uh, uh, like quotes from the Bible or how I need Jesus in my life or you know that vine I go stop it get some help you need that I'm kind of like enjoying this look without any lipstick on because like I don't know I feel awesome having very dry lips and it's very annoying because the top part like here the lips don't have any color. I mean, they have foundation on, but like... They don't have color. Like this bit on top doesn't have anything. It's so weird. And sometimes this whole part disappears, like the corners. I fortunately have no idea how I do not get obscene messages. I have friends who get very like nasty messages from men and stuff like that and fortunately I do not get any of those and I have no idea how but I'm very glad and I'm gonna need to hold my breath for a few seconds I'm gonna use Halpin from Kat Von D Beauty I really like how this shade fits everything I was gonna go for a deep red shade but I feel like I do that so many times it gets like boring I think it matches the warm tones in the eyes so well that it's just different from what I usually make and it looks good. Now I'm gonna do what I hate the most, which are focus. I hate doing them, I will forever hate to do them, but for the sake of the look, I need to because it's gonna look good and whatever. Okay, so I'm gonna answer one of the most recent ones that says, how you learn to growl will be so interesting for me. I mean, I've been listening to bands that have lead vocals that growl ever since I was like a kid because everybody has their own tastes in music and I've just always been into that since a very early age. I remember the first time I found out about Cannibal Corpse, I was like what is this shit? I want to know. This is amazing. Is this a real person singing? Because this is amazing. But I never actually considered doing it out myself. I have no idea why. Until I was in like seventh grade and I found out about Arch Enemy with Angela still. And I was like, oh shit, wait a minute, wait a minute. It's a woman. It's a woman and she's doing it. And of course, she was one of the my biggest inspirations into getting into growling, I mean. Let me just say, interrupt for a second, I'm gonna use the Tilly Coco lashes with, how do I pronounce this? Rouge and Rogue. I guess I always say the other way around. Also, has anyone noticed that ever since Rogue and Wolf came out that Loads of people have been using the words rogue and wolf. I wanna do it too. Like this only hit me a few years later. Uh, when I was in university actually, I was like, shit, this is so good. I have to understand how this works and I wanna do it too. 
So that's what I did. I started by just screaming when I was alone and this would be while I was driving. I felt when I was driving I could do mistakes because I was driving. So even if someone would hear me make a mistake, they would pass by the car for a second and then be like, where did that come from? So I was very um, comfortable doing that while driving because I was pretty sure that nobody would listen or so I thought. So I was like, okay, I need to learn how to do this. I put the songs in the car and then I would sing or I would scream to them while they were playing. Of course, in the beginning, I had no idea what I was doing. I got really frustrated, but I kept on going and going because I had no idea how to, how to do it and how to work with it and what I was supposed to feel. And then I started seeing these tutorials by Melissa Cross, if you haven't heard of her. Watch her DVD, The Zen of Screaming. It's amazing. It honestly helped me a lot understanding what I'm supposed to feel on the inside. As well as some talks that Angela has done over the years. Just put it on Google. It's all there. It's going to help you a lot. Um, so, give me a second. I need to hold my breath. Wait, I would drive every day to school, of course. School. To uni. I would drive every day. So every day I would practice going and back. I would just keep on doing it, keep on understanding until one day I just I just did it. I did it and I finally figured what I should be feeling to make it the right way. So of course throughout practice every time I would sing I would like adjust the muscles to make different techniques and make different types of growl and gutturals and stuff like that and of course the more you practice the faster you get there and I just practiced every single day and I still do because I need to keep it going uh, right now one of the things that helps me a lot understand what I need to feel is actually to sing clean so I have a playlist on Spotify, I just leave it on and I just explore vocals while singing songs clean. And in the meantime, I've understood how to do and the difference between gutturals, pick squeals, high pitch screams and just growling. These are completely different things and okay, not completely, but within the range of screaming and growling they are different things and you should feel them differently. Those two things, the Angela, like Angela Gossel's speeches and the Zen of Screaming have definitely helped me a lot in the beginning to then just go for myself and do it by myself. And then I just did it by myself, I kept trying and trying and trying and within a few months I was able to understand how I should growl and then after understanding how I should growl I learned how to scream properly and how to do high-pitched screams I mean for me it's easier because I'm a woman and my voice is um, higher than a man's so it was easier for me to understand how to do high-pitched screams first and then I learned how to do gutturals and then from the gutturals I've learned how to do pig squeals even though I don't do them much in our songs because I don't think it identifies with our style, the, the things we've created. But for example, I've done a few now in the album and just I love to get parts for everything instead of making a whole song just with gutturals or just with growling. Uh, I like to mix everything and that's I think why we have the style we have and why people also enjoy it it's because we have a bit of everything and we can create our own style in death metal. Like I was saying, the band is going to be two years this year and I've been doing this every single day for longer than that. So just practice a lot, practice, practice, practice. I mean, there are a lot of people that have asked me to make tutorials on how to growl, but I think I will never make them because I am not a professional doing it, I think, even though I've had professionals tell me that I'm kind of good at what I do. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm not bragging or anything, I'm just saying that apparently my technique is good. 
but I'm not a professional. I don't know how to teach other people how to do the right thing and I'm really scared about that. I'm really scared about doing lessons about gutturals and growling, whatever, and then harming someone or making them do the wrong thing by accident and I don't want that so I'm pretty sure that I'm never gonna make something like that so I hope you understand why I'm not gonna make this kind of tutorial any sooner just understand that it's a big responsibility and I don't feel in the right place to make it so thank you so much for watching I hope you liked the look I got to. Uh, I'm now gonna take a few pictures for Rogan Wolf, who I so dearly love. This top is actually from them as well. I'm not sure if you can see it. Also, it's crop top, so... I'm so proud. I hope it's focused on the camera because this doesn't have a continuous focus. It's just... I stay in a place, I focus there, and I stay in the same exact place the entire video. That's why sometimes when I move, it doesn't focus, you know. Basics of photography, so yeah. So, thank you so much for joining me in this Get Ready With Me. Now there will not be a problem of you who weren't able to see it on time. I hope you enjoy this look. I hope you can, if you do decide to recreate it, let me just put this out of the way. Uh, I would love to see your versions of this. Thank you also for keeping me company because... Thank you so much for keeping me company as well because while answering these things I kind of feel like I'm not doing the makeup alone because you are... Because you are getting in contact with me at the moment. Thank you so much for watching, thank you so much for being so patient because this video is probably gonna turn out to be like half an hour long uh, regarding the hair I don't know, like I was thinking about doing some stuff with him like over the eyes or something I don't know, I'm just gonna leave it like uh, it looks like so thank you so much for watching, I might photoshop this side on the pictures but i hope you had a little fun hearing my weird stories and i'm so sorry i don't have any super cool paranormal stories i wish i really do wish i had them but i don't thank you so much for being so cool and sweet and supportive and loving and caring and everything and i'll see you next time bye